Lauren, you have obviously leadership is one of the, the top success stories and, and one of the biggest traits uh, that I'm assuming a lot of the people that you spoke with possess. What are some of the other overarching themes of the book? A lot of the overarching themes were talking about having like the nerves of steel, not getting caught up in the moment. It didn't matter if you were Steve Sadoff of Sachs, Larry Lindsay, or Steve Forbes. They were all talking about you have to recognize the problem and you have to come up with a solution. But also, it's the human aspect of it, recognizing what you can control. Like Steve Sadoff of Sachs said, when he knew, when he saw that Lehman fell, he knew that the holiday shopping season was not going to be a good one, to put it mildly. <laughs> right. And he recognized that the one thing that he can control as CEO was inventory. Mm -hmm. So that's what he embraced and that's what they decided to seize on. So it's like little simple things of recognizing like the human nature mm -hmm. of being a CEO and communicating and recognizing the human capital, your employees. Of course, forward thinking. Um, so what are the certain, there have to be overarching traits that all these people that you spoke with possess. What are maybe the top three? They're honest, which I know when it's, it's almost like an oxymoron when you talk about <laughs> it. When you talk about businessmen, especially um, in today's culture. I would say a lot of them are very honest. Um, they recognize that they are human, that they're not superhuman. It's not like they're doing God's work, as we, as we have recently heard on the, on the airwaves. Yes. Um, there is a humility, and that it really is, it's not I, I, I. When I interviewed everybody, it was we. Mm -hmm. And that's really nice to see. So because teamwork. It's, it's, it, they're very teamwork oriented. Um. What are some of the, obviously your book goes into highlighted sectors or mm -hmm. stocks that investors should choose. What are some of the, the top ones and, and why? The two, top, the two top ones that I've heard over and over again were healthcare mm -hmm. and uh, education. Uh, pretty much healthcare because of what we're seeing right now in Washington with the healthcare reform. But not even just that, it's not like an insurer, so to speak, but it's biotech, it's innovation, it's R&D. Ken Langone is really into the innovation of healthcare, like what's the next big thing tomorrow? These are all long-term investors. Same thing with Ron Barron. Uh, he as well in healthcare is looking at like the cancer test of tomorrow. Who has like the better? So of you're talking things. about the, the research or the tech side of, of healthcare, exactly. not necessarily the HMOs and providers. Exactly, exactly. It's more of what is going to happen tomorrow with the with the tech the tech side of it. Uh, education, no brainer. It's it's really like people going back to school, mm -hmm. um, and also the need for engineers. As you know, the United States was a leader in engineers. We're not the leader anymore. So it's it, it's it's things like that that people are looking to put their money. So the, the stock market is at a 15 month high right now. I think investors are more bullish now than they have been in the last four years. What are your thoughts on that? Well, the stocks have gotten beaten down considerably last year, and it, a lot of people were looking at it as a buying opportunity. So, so I think we're seeing a lot of people getting back into the market where it's almost silly not to get back in at these levels because if you're a buy and hold, and I know a lot of people said last year that buy and hold is dead, like Ron Barron doesn't believe that. If you, if you hold your investments five years, even three years, you, you know, if things continue on this pace, you will see you will see a return. So it's just unhedged, overweight. We're going to hold these for a long time. Obviously, stocks got beat down last March. Exactly. And it's just gradually come back. Exactly. Um, we had Alice Schroeder on the show recently. She obviously got pretty close with Warren Buffett, um, talked about how humble and accessible and, and sort of almost boyish he was. And you had sort of echoed those thoughts uh, recently. Was that a shock to you? No. No. Not at all. I think from my own experience, and we have Mr. Buffett on, as you know, on Squat Box a lot, yep. my anchor Becky Quick, um, you know, just recently interviewed him. Um, I think when, it, when you get to a certain level, they're all like that. Like even Wilbur Ross, Wilbur calls me, he called me once at 3 o'clock in the morning, he was in, he was in Japan, about uh, the deal when he was buying the subsidiary of H&R Block. And every conversation when he makes these billion dollar deals go, goes something like this, hey Lori, it's Wilbur, hi, how are you? Because I'm making a deal tomorrow. I don't know if you want me on. I'm like, okay, so off the record, tell me what it is. And I'll go, well, you know, I'm buying a company you know, for $1 billion. <laughs> and I'll go, wait, Wilbur, is it B as in boy or one is in million? Oh, B as in boy. Very, you know, nonchalant. And then I'll go through the whole thing unfazed. of why he buys. Yeah, very unfazed. And then at the very end of the conversation, I'll go, Wilbur, what are you buying? Oh, I'm buying the subsidiary of H&R Block. Do you want me tomorrow? Is this newsworthy for you? 
So they never take for granted, I am Wilbur Ross, you should have me. It's always, it's- Can it's you a fit me in? Exactly, can you fit me in? And, I, and from my experiences with, with a lot of billionaires and, and big legendary investors, they all have that quality. They're very down to earth. And I think it's because they never lost touch of reality. Mm -hmm. And that's what you're seeing now is when you see the Kozlowskis of the world and other CEOs that have gone down that horrible path, the Bernie Madoffs of the world, they lost reality, total reality, mm -hmm. where normal people don't live that way. I mean, sure, you know, Wilbur has a lot of money, Ken Langone has a lot of money, but they're normal people. And I think that's what keeps them in touch. And the same thing with Mr. Buffett. He's a normal guy. Well, if you can never fit Wilbur in, we would be glad to have him on the show. <laughs> so feed him our way. <laughs> I definitely will. Um, are there is there talk of another book coming out? Uh, there there is. has to be a, a sequel, you know, the, the follow up. Yeah, I've had um, driving in the new new economy. <laughs> new new new. Uh, yeah, I am working on a second book. I am uh, talking to Wiley as we speak. We've had a great response for the book, so I'll be reopening my Rolodex and. Uh, seeing what opportunities uh, they see, and hopefully I can share it with more readers. Great, thank you, Lorian. Thanks for having me.